Welcome to the Rocking Horse Dreams. Today we're going to take a look at Hornet, a game for two to five players by Yanni and Taro Molise, and produced by Z-Man Games. In the game, players are honey-producing hornets with a territorial streak trying to conquer the most hives. Inside the box you get an instruction booklet, a modular round tracker, 12 terrain hexes, hives lettered A through J, and two field hexes. Start player and rail marker pawns, some chance chits and tied hive markers, a boatload of nectar cubes, which are basically the currency of the game, and two hornets, two hive victory markers, 20 honeycomb, and six action cards in each of the five player colors. The action cards are really the heart of the game and the hardest thing for people to get a handle on. There are two action cards each in three colors, with numbers denoting their order and icons showing what they do. In each of the colors, there is a friendly action and an aggressive action, denoted by the mischievous look on the hornet's face and the exclamation mark on the card's number. The aggressive cards have two possible outcomes, a huge benefit or a penalty. The penalty occurs if two people play cards of that color regardless of if they are aggressive or not in a two or three player game, or if three people play the same color in a four or five player game. So in a four player game, if three people play yellow cards, anyone who played the aggressive yellow card has to pay the penalty. Now let's take a look at what the cards do. The yellow number one and two are nectar collecting actions. The friendly number one allows a player to collect three nectar cubes from a hex where they have a hornet. The aggressive number two allows a player to collect all of the nectar from a hex where they have a hornet, if the aggressive action goes through. However, if there is a penalty, the player is only allowed to collect two nectar, and they must remove one of their honey from any hive on the board. The orange three and four are honey-making actions. The aggressive number three allows a player to pay two nectar to switch an opponent's honey with their own at a hive where they have a hornet, spending up to six nectar. The penalty action is paying two nectar to only remove an opponent's honey and removing a honey of their own from any hive. The friendly number four allows a player to spend two nectar to either remove an opponent's honey or add their own, or spend one nectar to flip a chance chit. If the chit lands face up, a honey may be placed or removed. If face down, the nectar was wasted. Either of these actions may be combined up to a maximum of eight nectar spent but one may only remove honey or add their own in the turn, not both. The blue five and six are flying actions. The aggressive number five allows a player to move a hornet three spaces and collect three nectar from where they land. The penalty still allows a player to move the three spaces, but no nectar is collected and the player must remove a honey. The friendly number six allows a player to move a hornet three spaces, collecting one nectar from where it lands. Hornets cannot fly through hedges on the board, but they may land on the same space they left. To set up the game, arrange the terrain according to the number of players. You can use the recommended setup or however you see fit as long as all hexes are accessible. Place the turn pawn on the first flower space on the turn tracker. Seed each hex with three nectar. Give each player four nectar and all of their colored accoutrement. Give the youngest player the start player pawn and they will be the first player. Players now take four of their honey pieces and in turn order they will take turns placing one of their honey pieces into the hives until all four have been placed. During setup, each player can only have two honey in any hive, but all players can have honey in the same hive. The number of honey in any hive is limited by the number of hexes in that hive. Next, players in turn order will place one of their hornets onto a hex until both of their hornets have been placed. Again, players can put hornets where others have already put theirs. The game is now ready to begin. There are two types of rounds, action rounds and scoring rounds, and they are determined by where the pawn is on the round tracker. The flower spaces are action rounds, and the lettered spaces are scoring rounds. We'll start with an action round. Each action round, every player will first pick one of their action cards to place face down in front of them. When all players have done so, the cards are flipped face up, and the players perform the actions they chose with one of their hornets. In numerical order of cards played, tied numbers take place in turn order, starting with the player closest to the player with the start player pawn. Once all of the actions have been performed, the cards go back into the player's hand, one nectar is added to each filled and unscored hive. The start player pawn moves one player clockwise and the round marker moves down one. If the round marker lands on a lettered space, the hive of that letter is scored. The player with the most honey in that hive wins it. First, all of the honey in that hive moves on to the appropriate spaces on the round marker. This comes into play as a tiebreaker at the end of the game. The winner then collects all of the nectar on that hex and places one of their victory markers over the hive. If this is the player's third one hive, they win the game. If not, play continues. If there is a tie for most honey, one of the tied hive markers is placed on that hive. No one gathers the nectar and the honey goes into the round track. The round pawn then moves one space and play continues. 
There are instances late in the game with two consecutive scoring rounds. In this case, there are no actions performed between them, which can be pretty tricky. Play continues until one player wins their third hive, or the game ends by rounds as denoted on the round track, in which case the player who has the most hives won wins. If there is a tie for most hives, then the player with the most honey collected wins. And that's Hornet. It's a game that packs a lot into a very small package. There are several Euro mechanisms, resource management, action selection, worker placement, all put together in such a way as to be very accessible. There is only one type of resource to manage, only six actions to choose from, and only two workers, which is about right for a light family game. The modular board and round tracker really add to the replayability and can change the strategies from game to game. It can definitely be used as a gateway game, but probably has a better fit as the next step sort of game, depending on the group. There are a few hurdles as some of the mechanisms are hard to grasp at first for new players, and the penalties take a few turns for people to wrap their heads around, but all in all it's a game I really enjoy.